So this has a dual core CPU, has four gigs RAM, has a 16 gig SSD. We have two USB 3 ports at the front. On the back here, we have another four USB 2 ports. We have VGA out and we have dual display ports and we also have gigabit ethernet. Now this HP thin client PC cost me $25 from eBay and this is now running Android. So on this device, I can now access all of my favorite streaming applications, all of my favorite Android applications. I have access to the entire Play Store and I can also expand the storage by just plugging in a USB hard drive. And once again, this only cost me $25. It is HP branded, so you really do have a very solid, decent build quality. Let me now power this up and let's see exactly what we can do on this $25 device. Okay, let's now power that on. So I've plugged this into my monitor via the display port. And would you look at that guys, we've now booted inside Android. We have all of my favorite applications over here. We do have a nice weather widget on the top right. I can go over to the start menu. Here we can see some of the other applications I've installed. Um, I can open up YouTube and we can see that YouTube is playing absolutely fine on this small, tiny, thin client. I mean, how fantastic is that picture? Let's close that down. So YouTube is working fine. We also have some of our other applications over here. Let's try this one over here. Here we can see all of the popular uh, streaming content that's available out there. Let's just try this one over here. Click on one of these and doing this in real time with no editing. Oh, let me just select an episode first. Let's just do this one over here. And there we have it. So once again, I will just say, running Android natively on your device is just so much faster than doing any kind of Android emulator like Knox or Bluestacks. Let's close that down. I mean, that's just one application. Of course, we can install applications like File Linked. Let's open that up. And here we can just see, guys, we now have access to pages and pages of applications that we can store directly on our thin client or with just one click. And of course, we have access to the entire, and I really do mean entire Play Store. So any kind of application, any kind of game, any kind of utility you want, just one click and you can start installing that directly onto your device. So in this video today, let me show you how you can also install Android onto your PC or your thin client or really any computer running the x86 architecture. We'll boot with a USB stick and then install Android onto the actual hard drive of our computer, which will give us the best performance. So with all of that being said, let's get started. <laughs> If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to install Android onto your mini PC or your thin client, you need to have firstly a USB drive. So I'm using a small eight gig drive over here. We also need to have two bits of software. Now to get the software, if you go over to my website, which is just techdoctoruk.com, go over to the tutorials page and you'll see that the latest tutorial in the list is how to install Prime OS onto your mini PC or your thin client. And here we can see we have a link for Rufus and also for Prime OS. Now Rufus is actually the application which will allow you to burn ISO images onto a USB drive. And the link for Prime OS will actually take you to their website where you can actually download the software. So let's get Rufus first, let's click on that. Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. Okay, let's click on save. Let's now click on the link for Prime OS. Now Prime OS does actually come in three separate flavors. Now, depending on what kind of device you have and how old it is, that will determine which version you need to install. So we click on the green download button first. Now we can see here that we have Prime OS mainline, we have standard and we have classic. Let's click on that. Click on the ISO image. This will then take you to another link. I can now click on the green button here. And this should now provide me with a couple of mirrors that I can use to actually download the ISO image directly onto my machine. Let's click on one of these. And here we can just see the two files I've downloaded. I've already plugged in my USB drive. Let's now start Rufus. Let's double click on that. And here is the Rufus application. So the first thing we want to do is actually select our ISO image. So let me click on select. I've just navigated to the folder where I copied across the Prime OS ISO image. Here it is. Let's click on that. Click on open. Let's just double check to make sure that we have got the correct USB drive selected. In my case, it is the E drive. So we have the E drive up there. We have the ISO image down here. 
Make sure that the partition scheme is set to MBR and leave the rest of these options as default and let's click on start. Click on OK again and that will now basically expand the ISO image and install it or burn it onto the USB drive. And there we have it guys, when we see the ready message, that means that that process has now completed. We can now click on close. Now the great thing about this USB stick is, is not only can you install Android OS from it onto your hard drive, you can also just run Android OS directly from the USB stick without actually making any changes to your system. Now I do recommend that if you are trying this out for the first time and just to make sure that the hardware that you have is compatible so you can boot the USB stick, select the live option which basically means it's not going to make any changes to your system, make sure that all of your components, your Wi-Fi, your network card, your display settings, everything works as it should. Once you're happy with that, you can then actually install it onto your hard drive. Okay, let's jump over to my thin client. Okay, so here is our USB drive. Let me now plug that in and let's now power that on. Now the key thing here is that we have to tell the thin client to boot from the USB drive. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into the BIOS. Here we can see press the escape key for the startup menu. Let me press that. Okay, so here is the startup menu. The option we want to go for is F10, which is the BIOS setup. So let me press that now. Okay, so we're inside the BIOS now. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to the boot order and I'm going to move my USB drive to the top. Okay, that's now done. So the USB drive will be the first priority and then it will be the internal hard drive. Let's press F10 to accept. Now the last thing we have to do is make sure that secure boot is actually disabled on this device. Now for us to do that is go over to security and we can see we have the secure boot configuration here. Let's open that up. Let's press F10 to continue. And here we can just see that on my device, legacy support is enabled. And the key thing is, is that we have secure boot disabled. Once you confirm that on your device, we can press F10 to accept, save changes and exit. Let's do that now. Click on yes. And this should now boot from the USB drive. Let's see if it does that. And there we have it guys, we have the Prime OS Live option and that's the option I was talking about where if I select this option, everything will just happen on the USB drive and it won't make any changes onto my system. So once again, that is a great way just to confirm whether your hardware or your device is compatible with Prime OS. But in my example, I'm going to go to the third option which is Advanced Options. Let's click on that and we can see we have the option here, Prime OS Auto Install to a Specified Hard Disk. That's the option I want to go for. So let me press enter on that. Let's give that a second. And here we can see it's identified the internal hard disk, which is 16 gig in size. And it's also seeing the current USB drive. So because I want to install it to the hard disk, I'm going to leave the first option selected. Click on OK. Click on Yes. That will then basically format that hard disk and then install Prime OS for us. So let's give that a second. And let me just take this opportunity to give a big shout out to my main man, Andrew. He was the one that actually emailed me about this device and told me some of the cool things that you can do with it. So many thanks for your knowledge and your advice on this. Okay, let's give that a second. Okay, we get the message that the Prime OS is installed successfully. We can now run Prime OS or we can reboot. So I'm gonna go for the reboot option and I'm gonna take out the USB flash drive. So let's take that out, select reboot, and let's see if we can now boot into Prime OS from this thin client. Now we'll be booting directly from the hard disk. And there we have it guys, we now see the Prime OS logo, which means that the system is now booting. Let me just give a massive thanks to all of my new members on my channel. Your support really does mean a lot to me. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I am doing a special promotion where all of you will be added into my private chat group, a place where we can talk about stuff, we can give support to each other, and of course, we can even share APKs. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for that join button. Thank you. Here we have it guys. So just like that, we've now booted into Android on our HP Think client. So definitely guys, do give a thumbs up for that. Okay, so I've just installed some applications onto my Think client just so we can see exactly how this box performs. Now, most of these applications you can get directly from the Play Store, but before you do that, let me just tell you a couple of key things I do recommend you doing when you first get this onto your device. Now, the first thing I recommend is if you go over to your Start menu, go over to Settings, go to Prime OS Settings, make sure you've got the first two options turned on, then go into Multi-Window, now I found that pretty much all of these applications work with multi-window disabled. So by default, these will all be ticked. And as you install more applications, they will actually come up as ticked. So the thing I recommend doing is just going in here, finding the stuff you have installed and just unticking it like this. 
and this will just make sure that the application will actually launch in full screen and once again the reason for that is just greater compatibility now let's close this down i've installed a couple of games a couple of emulators again all from the play store now if you do want to install farlinked for your um, other applications the easiest way to do that is just open up a browser and just navigate to get.farlinked.com. Let me do that now. So get.farlinked.com. And this will immediately start downloading the application onto your device. Here it is. Let's click on open. Now I'm not going to go into details on exactly what Farlinked is because I'm sure you guys know already. You can just type in somebody's code and you'll get complete access to all of the applications in that particular store. And here we can just see, for example, in this store, there is just tons and tons of stuff in there. We can obviously download applications directly from the Play Store. So any kind of utility, any kind of game, any kind of application you want, just one click and you can download that. Now in terms of performance, guys, let's just try browsing to some websites. Uh, let's just try uh, Amazon.co.uk. I mean, that for me is, is, you know, is more than adequate. I can scroll fine, it looks fairly smooth. I can click on stuff and definitely you won't be able to find any kind of Android box for $25 that will give you performance like this especially when you get to the gaming guys. So let's try that now. Let's close this down and let's start with a bit of PSP. Now for us to play PSP, like I mentioned, you can install this directly from the Play Store. And in my example, I actually copied across some games to the internal hard drive of this unit. Now for me to actually play that, I'm actually going to plug in an Xbox One controller over USB and it's complete plug and play. So no configuration, no downloading anything. As soon as I plug this in, uh, it's probably not going to work now, but let's see. Now we can see now I'm able to control everything just by using the controller. So let's open up the PP SSP emulator. Let's click on that. Uh, let's just do a uh, wipeout and let's just see a box costing $25. What kind of performance we can get. I mean, how nice does that look guys? Uh, what the controls? There we go. I mean, honestly, when I saw this the first time I was actually blown away and there's just no way you'll be able to find any kind of box for $25 that can give you this kind of smooth gameplay on a game like this. All right, definitely though, I'm very happy and impressed with this game running on this $25 HP Thin Client. Okay, let's try something else. And that's brought back a lot of memories playing this game uh, in the arcades. There you go. How do I throw a grenade? There you go. Okay, so how about some N64 emulation on this $25 HP Thin Client? All right, that's working good. Can I pick something up? Look at that overtake. Now, if you do want to change the wallpaper, you can just press and hold here, click on wallpapers, Click on something, click on set wallpaper, select both. And that's how easy it is to change guys. So you can really customize this device and get it looking exactly how you like it. Okay, so what do I think about this HP ThinkLine as a small Android streaming device? Well, I would say I definitely think it's a great contender. Firstly, we have the great price point of just $25. And that $25 gives you dual core CPU, gives you four gigs RAM, gives you 16 gigs of SSD storage. You get the six USB ports. It has fantastic build quality. And we saw the Radeon graphics card, just exactly how well this performs for your retro games, for your PSP emulation, and even your light Android gaming, all of that performs really well. On top of that, you get access to the entire Play Store and to get all of that for around about $25, I do think that's a fantastic price. And of course you are completely free to install any operating system that you like. So in my example, I installed Prime OS. You can install a different version of Android or maybe even Linux or maybe even an old version of Windows XP to make it into a pure home theater system. So lots of options, lots of great things to try out. Do leave me a comment below what you think about this device, guys. Do let me know what you think about this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.